Hello, I'm Ryan F9 and these are my favorite street and commuting motorcycle boots. I'm going to start with my picks that tend towards form and then slowly work into more functional footwear. So this is the $200 Icon Super Duty 4 and it's probably my first choice for a commuter shoe. Something that I can ride to work in in the morning and then wear around the office all day. It's a pretty legitimate motorcycle boot. Full leather upper, a steel shank sole. We have armor plating on both the pointy bits of your ankle. Um, it's a really solid toe box, really solid heel counter as well. Uh, but at the same time, it's a very practical working shoe. I mean, this is super comfortable to walk in. Uh, the tread pattern underneath is soft on the foot peg interface, but everywhere else it's grippy enough. And the style is excellent. That's probably because Icon ripped off the Timberland Shoe Company here, but nah, I mean, that's their problem, not mine. I think this is a stunning looking shoe, especially in brown or wheat colorways. It looks phenomenal under a pair of jeans. I ordered the black one because I wanted to see if there's any magic in it. There's not really. To be honest, I would probably order one of the other colorways if I was to do it again. Fitment wise, I wear an 11 and a half in pretty much everything, and this 11 and a half is spot on. To do it up, you just tie up the laces exactly like you learned in grade school, and then snap this positive lock buckle across the top. And I like the buckle. It does a really good job of snugging up the entire shoe, and I think it's gonna last a long time. I mean, it's made from aluminum. I put mine through 15,000 riding kilometers last season and a ton of hiking kilometers, and I have no reason to assume that it's gonna give out anytime soon. I like the build quality in general. They take a while to break in, but once they do, they are very comfortable and they're very solid. Now, Icon does not market these as waterproof, so they're definitely not gonna guarantee what I'm about to say, but the Super Duty 4 is probably gonna keep you dry. I mean, if I spray some waterproof leather protector on here and stay away from the big puddles, yeah, I'd trust these through a rainy ride. The one thing that I do hate about the Super Duty is this shifter panel. Because when I have my jeans rolled over this buckle, the only thing that gives away the motorcycle boot are these stupid rubber nubs. And if it weren't for them, you wouldn't be able to tell this from a regular shoe. And it's annoying too, because these actually do nothing to help me shift. Icon, get rid of the shifter panel in the next iteration. Now, for $300, I could get another multi-purpose shoe, which is the TCX X-Blend waterproof boot. I think this is better than the Super Duty in every way except for one, and I'll get to that. The X-Blend is CE rated, so it has ankle, heel, and toe armoring. It's full leather construction, just like the Icon Super Duty, although this one does come up a little bit higher around the calf, so you get the extra slide protection that does come with that. There's a full waterproof lining in here. That's the big way that the TCX is gonna sink the Icon. Um, and yet somehow, uh, this manages to achieve the same weight as the Super Duty. It's basically 840 grams. Because of that, it feels very nimble on the foot. Out of the box, I would say that this shoe is more comfortable to wear, it's easier to walk in, and it doesn't look as clunky as the Icon Super Duty. It's more of a classic vintage-y style, and kudos to TCX because this shifter panel is subtle enough that it doesn't stand out. I'm not in love with the laces. Of course, the only thing that they really endanger is my pride. If the laces do catch on the motorcycle, I'm probably not going to notice until I get to the next stoplight and then try to put my foot down and then topple over in one of the lamest and most public crashes known to exist. I mean, it's a bummer that that could happen here, but then again, the Icon Super Duty had the same problem. No, the one thing that detracts me from this shoe is the comfort. The leather is incredibly supple right out of the box. The ankle is squishy, the heel and toe cup seem to move with my foot, and that really scares me. I prefer a stiffer boot when it's new. Give me a firmer sole, give me thicker leather, give me stiffer armoring, because I know that all of that is going to break in over time, and when it does, I'm going to have a shoe that's comfortable and safe. I don't mind putting in the saddle time to get a shoe feeling like this eventually, but when it feels like this out of the box, it feels this good. I'm skeptical that TCX kind of sacrificed too much in terms of safety here. So I like the x blend. It's meant to blend style and protection, and it definitely succeeds. I mean, no, it's not the exact blend that I would want. Personally, I like a little bit more oomph from a motorcycle boot, but if you're less concerned with protection than I am, this is an excellent choice. Now, I've picked two commuter boots that function well and look good, but what if I don't care that much about appearances? Maybe I ride on the street just for fun. Maybe I commute 200 kilometers a day, which basically makes me a tourer. If that's the case, I want Alpine Star's new Land GTX. And GTX stands for Gore-Tex, so I know that this is gonna be the most waterproof boot that we've seen. Gore-Tex is like solid gold for motorcyclists. We're willing to pay a lot for guaranteed dryness, so you normally see this material come into play sort of around the four or $500 mark. The new line GTX, though, is only $290 on Fortnite.ca right now. So how is it so cheap? Obviously, you save some of that money by getting a half-length boot. 
And we also save on the closure system. See, the Newland eschews the fancy AquaGuard zippers and the buckles for this good old Velcro. And it does make me feel a little bit like a kindergartner to do up my boot with Velcro, but I don't really have a legitimate complaint because it does work. The biggest cost-saving move was probably cutting off the Gore-Tex liner a good three inches below the top of the boot. Now, I definitely want a waterproof pant that's going to come down below this point, otherwise I'm going to have water leaking in through the top. Anyway, I have loved wearing these boots, mainly because they're versatile. More than anything else on my list, the Newland is warm when it's cold outside and cool when it's hot. And then I also have this accordion stretch fabric on the front and back, which gives me totally unrestricted ankle movements. This is pretty much equal in walking comfort to the X-Blend. Plus, it comes in about 100 grams lighter. I'll run through the usual goodies to close us off. Ankle protection baked into both sides, heel counter, toe box, reflective strip on the rear, two mesh vents, which is the first of the day, CE certification, full grain leather all around, and a steel shank sole that's a hybrid somewhere between walking and riding. On that note, it's the same exact sole that we see on the Alpine Stars Rome 2 waterproof boot. When I want to know what a boot is for, I look at the bottom of it. And this is a tech touring sole just like the New Land, and so that means that the Rome 2 here is meant for heavy street use, and serious commuting, touring, that kind of thing. Three big differences from the New Land though. Obviously, it comes up higher. So I'm getting the extra slide protection and the shin armoring that comes with that territory. And this is probably the most protective boot on my list, and that's why I see it on sport tours all the time. The second big difference is the waterproof membrane. This is A-Star stuff, so it's not Gore-Tex, and there's no lifetime guarantee of dryness on the Rome 2. Of course, having said that, this guy does receive a ton of positive reviews specifically referencing its waterproofing, so it's probably one of the better non-Gore-Tex options out there. And it also comes in about $60 cheaper than the new land, again, probably because it's not Gore-Tex. The third big difference is the chassis. It's synthetic leather here rather than the real cow, so I am lacking a little bit of that breathability. To be honest though, I don't care, because the waterproof membrane in here wasn't that breathable to begin with. Other than that though, the Rome 2 runs the same stats as the new lens. CE approval, toe heel and ankle armor, re-reflective insert, etc, etc, etc. And just like the new lens, I normally wear an 11 and a half, but I find that the 10 and a half is the better fit for me here. So that's it for my favorite street and commuter boots. Thank you guys very much for watching.